So actually, Cami, why don't you uh, why don't you share with everybody where you're coming from? Because you tend to be a little bit uh, a little mobile lately, huh? Well, I was just putting in the chat that I'm in my RV and currently I'm in Florida. I'm on the west coast of Florida near Tampa, um, but I've been tooling around here and there, going down to the Keys over to Miami. I, I got my RV 62 days ago and I'm full time RVing, spreading the good word of charitable real estate. And there's no better way to do it than with video. Absolutely. Love it. Yeah, well, we'll have to we'll have to dive into talking more about that lifestyle if we have some time here. Um, but I do believe we are up and running live on Facebook. So let's go ahead and dive into our conversation. Um, those of you that have joined us so far, I want to thank you for being here. Uh, we took a few weeks off and we're actually doing something, you know, a little bit different. Typically, we have sort of a formal presentation, uh, sort of a webinar style uh, presentation. This day, this week, actually, we're doing something different. I brought Cami Baker in to share with us. Um, basically, we're going to be talking about the charitable giving of real estate. We're going to be talking about using video and uh, some cool, innovative ways that by combining those two, you can really improve you know, what you're doing in your business, attract more listings, for instance, uh, which I think a lot of us are probably excited to hear about, and much more. So first of all, Cami, thanks for joining me today. Thank you for asking me. The minute that we met, I knew that we would make some magic, so thank you. Love it. All right. Well, let's start simple here. Why don't you just tell all of our viewers a little bit about what you do and what the, the real agent of change is all about? Well, after about 18 years in the real estate industry and the last few years, um, I did HGTV House Hunters. I was a big time prospector. I was in the top 5%. And in the last few years, I wrote a book and I've been teaching uh, for profits and nonprofits how to partner together on what we call cause marketing, making money and making a difference. And I'm just going along in life out doing a lot of public speaking and coaching and, and doing fundraisers and helping for profits and nonprofits make money together. And uh, I was sitting at a conference about a year and a half ago and I heard about charitable real estate. And I was like, hmm. what? You can donate real estate $8 billion a year already? How come I've never heard of this? People give their property away? Real estate agents can make money with this, what? So a couple of months later, the pandemic hit and I was completely unemployed as a public speaker and a fundraising expert. And um, it gave me nothing to do but delve into charitable real estate and how this whole thing goes down. So now we have created the Real Agents of Change, which is a Facebook group and a tribe of people all around the country, real estate agents, nonprofits, um, and all the community leaders that support and serve all of them teaching how this is a secret real estate niche that is funding nonprofits by the billions, and it's really, really, really untapped. So we are now certifying real estate agents and all the people around them to get certified as a charitable real estate specialist. And there's really no better way to position yourself as an expert than to show up in video. And a lot of my one-on-one -on -one clients and people who are doing custom cause marketing campaigns are doing it by interviewing people in their marketplace, the nonprofits, the leaders, the companies that are philanthropic. And you know the, the, the downright purpose of that is to be seen and be heard and get exposure so that we can bring a billion dollars to the nonprofit world every year just through our group. Wow. Okay. Well, that's quite an impressive goal there. So let, let's talk more about kind of the, the background of this a little, because I think you know, when I first met with you, you know, I, I, I guess I'd assumed that giving real estate, you know, from a charitable standpoint was a thing that was happening, but I had no idea how it would work. Um, and one thing you kind of helped me understand was that it, it actually can be kind of hard to donate real estate. So for instance, someone passes on and you know, the family wanted to donate that property, that's actually kind of some, some challenges there. So tell us about, you know, uh, what are the challenges to donating real estate and then how do, how do you guys or how do real estate agents kind of come in to help facilitate that? Sure. Well, what I learned was there's 1.3 million nonprofits in this country. And when a good old donor says, Hey, you know what? I got $500 cash or I got this $200,000 condo. I'm not using anymore. I'll give you the condo. 99.9% .9 of the nonprofits say no, it's complicated, it's risky. A lot of the times there's, there's unexpected expenses and, and we can even give cash, 
to the property donor. So if the property donor has a million dollar piece of property, it's appraised at a million and they say, you know what, I love my veterans, but I don't love them that much. I'd like to get 300,000 cash out to put little Billy in college. We can do that too. So the nonprofits just simply, even if someone with 30 years of real estate experience is sitting on their board, a lot of the times there's mortgages to be paid off, cash to be given out, et cetera. So the nonprofits say no, it's very complicated, or they've had a bad horror story about, you know, how they got this property and it was contaminated and it was, you know, they wasted a lot of money. So with that being said, when I learned all that, I also learned that there's a really small handful of specialized nonprofits whose sole reason for existing are to accept these donations, list and liquidate to give the cash to the nonprofits that the donor wants them to go to. So the specialized nonprofit that I work with, I told them, I said, look, I don't want to bring you one or two or 10 donations. I said, there's 2 million realtors in this country. Having been one for many years, I know what they want. I know how they think. I said, let's get 1% of them certified so that they know instead of giving hundred dollars at closing or 10% to their client's favorite charity, Let's teach them how they can actually leverage real estate. And they said, tell your real estate friends, we'll give them a full commission when they work with us. And I said, oh, okay. So now what we're doing is as we certify our real estate agents all over the country, we let them know when there's a property donated, you are the listing agent. It's a full commission. We list and liquidate it with you so that you can give hundreds of thousands of dollars to your nonprofits and put money in your pocket. And the donors love it because they're now able to leave the legacy that they always wanted to. 80% of the people who donate real estate do it because they love, you know, I looked up Jeff, Jeff, I saw something with you about Alzheimer's, you know, people who donate property do it because they are passionate about their their community so with jeff knowing so many people in real estate imagine jeff the average donation from real estate is five hundred and fifty thousand dollars you know that can go to alzheimer's without an extra donor or without doing a traditional fundraiser and the realtor gets paid a full commission so it's really a win-win-win yeah I mean, it sounds like there's quite a bit uh that, that's appealing here and so you know, I do have some obviously follow-up questions for you. I do want to let everybody know that's watching right now, though. We want this to be as interactive as possible. So please post your questions in the chat. If you're watching on Facebook, you know, feel free to post in the comments. We'll try to check in there as well every few minutes. Um, but yeah, we'd love for you to be a part of the conversation. And I also want to take a second to welcome uh, Jeff to the stage here. Jeff, good to see you. Hey, glad to be here. Cammie, nice to meet you. Sorry I was late. You're a busy guy. Cool. We appreciate you. So I want to, the next question I have for you, Cammie, as we're talking about this is, you know, it seems like there's some, some really substantial wins here. I mean, obviously um, it's a win for the real estate agent. It's a win for the nonprofit. Um, there's, there's kind of the unique aspect of the fact that a single donation could probably replace a massive fundraising campaign. And if we're talking about $500,000, I mean, you know, you're talking a pretty substantial, you know, fundraising night with hundreds and hundreds of people there that you're not having to do anymore. So there's, there's certainly some really exciting things here. Um, why is this already not extremely common? I mean, what are, what are some of the things you think have sort of prevented this from uh, being more common? And, I, and I, I know you've already addressed that a little bit, but um, as a real estate agent, I mean, are there places we should start to listen or are there certain opportunities that we should be kind of keying in on that would maybe help us uh, facilitate some of these deals? Well, thank you for asking it in a little bit different way, because that is a question that we get. If this is so great, why have I never heard of it? Why isn't everybody doing it? But isn't it true that anything that takes off got started somewhere? You know, way back 18 years ago, when I was in real estate, a woman said, hey, my, my daughter has a house. She owes more than it's worth. I need you to help her. And I said, what do you want me to do with that? And she said, well, back in the 80s, they did something called a short sale. Look it up. And I looked up short sales and the only thing that came up was that Victoria's Secrets was having a sale on shorts. And if I had <laughs> known then what I know now, I would have bought shortsales.com, how to do a short sale, short sale, California, short sale, New York, et cetera. So that got its start way back when nobody knew what it was and now it's just commonplace. So it's the same thing here with what we're doing. 
charitable real estate has been happening since 1917 when the United States government said, hey, property owners, donate your real estate to a 501c3 and you don't pay any capital gains tax. You can write off the appraised value regardless of what it sells for. Like there's a lot of benefits to this, but back to the original thing, even if a real estate agent knows how to do this, and even if the donor wants to donate their property to Alzheimer's, for exa example, when they go to donate it, the nonprofit says, we don't do that. It's against our board regulations. It's too complicated. Go sell it and then give us the proceeds. And when that happens, there's a lot of money that's going to Uncle Sam that doesn't need to. Property donor is not getting the benefits that they could. So the reason that none of us have heard of it is just because there's been this glitch. There's been this gap. Yeah, you can donate property and get great benefits. Yeah, you could make a lot of money from accepting real estate. Mm, big gap, big problem here. They won't do it. So these particular gentlemen that I'm partnered with, this specialized nonprofit, they took a look at this 20 years ago and they said, why is this big discrepancy? Like they're at this point, they're all 30, 40 years in commercial real estate. They've sat on boards, they're very philanthropic. And they said, let's fix this problem. Let's figure out what the problem is. So long story short, they said 400 billion a year going to nonprofits, 90% of it's cash, but we all have less than 10% cash in our pocket, including wealthy. 43% of our wealth is in real estate. Let's make a nonprofit that accepts gifts of real estate. We understand real estate, we understand philanthropy. Let's keep a very, very small portion, very small, 10% or less of the proceeds and give 90 to 95% of the proceeds to the nonprofit world that the donor wants it to go to. So there's a handful of these specialized nonprofits. I know one that keeps 30% no matter what. I know one that keeps 85%. So when I was doing my research, when I saw, wow, how could my real estate friends make money at this? How could they get in front of high net worth people? How could they be the go-to agent for hundreds or thousands of nonprofits in their marketplace? I started looking for the right specialized nonprofit and I found the right one who wants to pay a full commission, keeps the smallest percent to keep their doors open and understands how to give the benefits to the property donors that they really want. Wow. Well, that's great. So let's walk through that process for just a second. So let's say you're an agent and you identify, you know, a high net worth individual or something like that, that wants to, to donate this property. Um, what are the next steps? So, you know, do you go to this nonprofit first? And, and obviously, if you want to tell us a little bit about how you teach agents to facilitate this, that would be a good opportunity to do that as well. Sure. So, you know, the first question that we want to ask the donor of the property is what are your intentions? Because yep. let's be clear, there's a lot of people out there that would want to take advantage of the system, want to get one over on the government with taxes and all that kind of stuff. So the specialized nonprofit that we work with is the same one that Fidelity Charitables, the largest nonprofit in this country, teams up with. They bring in $9 billion a year, Fidelity Charitables. And they don't even do their own real estate transactions. They leverage our team. And so because of that, there's a lot of credibility, a lot of authenticity, and a lot of not doing anything fraudulent. So once we know that the donor truly has charitable intention and or they do want to do some really great strategic tax planning, but they understand that there's a lot of legitimate questions here, then they, we do a, a net sheet. They find out, okay, here's what it would look like if you sold the property, here's your tax consequences, et cetera. Here's what it would look like if you donate. And in the class that we teach, our certification class, my partners are so brilliant. They can show you in 10 minutes how to take a property valued at 1.2 million and turn it into a property valued at 1.6 million because of all the value that is given to the property donor with their tax benefits, no capital gains to the government, et cetera. So once the property donor says, yep, this is what we want to do. Here's how much we want to go to the veterans. Here's how much we want to go to our church. Here's how much we want to go to the homeless shelter. In other words, one property can facilitate many different nonprofits getting funded. Then 
the specialized nonprofit is the one that takes the property. So this is very important because the 1.3 million nonprofits out there that don't take real estate and can't, they really shouldn't. They don't, they, they would get underwater with it. They wouldn't know what to do. So our guys take possession of it. And then we list it with your real estate agent at a full commission. And when it's liquidated and the proceeds are in hand, 90 to 95% of those proceeds are granted out to the nonprofits that the donor wanted to have them. It's really, really that simple. It's one of those things where it sounds so simple. It sounds so good. What's wrong with this? What's the catch? Mm -hmm. Well, there really is no catch. The specialized nonprofit gets paid up to 10% of the proceeds. I get paid to teach and train and spread the good word. The real estate agent gets a full commission. The nonprofit gets 90 to 95% of the proceeds. The property donor gets their tax benefits. And the best part of all, truly, legacy. The property mm -hmm. donor gets to leave the legacy that they want. The real estate agents can leave a legacy because now it's not just about the properties that are being donated. It's about how that real estate agent, especially through video, can get out and be seen and be heard as the charitable real estate specialist. Because when I help them get interviewed on video, uh, be written up in the newspaper because of their charity, imagine all of the other nonprofits that start to reach out to them and ask them, hey, you just gave a check for $300,000 to our local church. Can you help our veterans group? Our colleges are suffering. Our churches are suffering. Children are being sex trafficked. Animals are starving. This is a good time for us to step up, stop fundraising, and start funding these nonprofits so that they can do what they were created to do. Love it. Well, so now let's talk, you know, I think we understand a pretty good idea of sort of the opportunity here. And I do want to start talking about um, video and how video plays a, a big part in this. Um, now, there was a question that came through in the chat. I just want to address real quick. There was a question. Somebody had to get off and was wondering, you know, is this being recorded? Yes, it is being recorded. You can find it uh, sometime in the next couple of days on the Lab Code Agents YouTube page, or you will also find it on the Facebook page of Lab Code Agents. So if you do want to check that out, if you need to watch the recording later, it will be available. Just want to mention that real quick. Um, and then I'll, I'll continue to check the uh, chat for uh, any questions. So please, you know, submit your questions as we're going here. Um, back to the conversation, Cami. So, you know, we see this as an opportunity. I think my next question would be, so how, how as an agent do I start to position myself um, and talk about this? Because obviously one of the, the sort of challenges here is probably education, just helping people understand that this is even an option that they have. So what advice do you have for, for agents in sort of in sense of sort of positioning themselves um, to attract these kinds of donations? Well, I appreciate you asking me that because that is the big, that's the $10 million question. Right. This is great. Sounds awesome. I get it. Now I understand why I've never heard of it. Now I understand why people do want to donate. And it kind of makes sense. Like 87% of consumers want to work with people who are socially responsible. As a matter of fact, one of my agents just got a, a $500,000 buyer out in Washington state because he saw one of her videos and he said, I want to work with people who are socially responsible. I want to hire you. And so that's, that's how it works. People want to work with those who are socially responsible. So the question is, what do we do now? What does the nonprofit do to let their donors know, Hey, we can benefit from real estate. How does the real estate agent know? So we want to start positioning ourselves. And, you know, we're, we're here talking about video with purpose and being able to seen as, as the hero, as the go-to person. So creating that video, we actually go through uh, in our process, what I call the seven Ps from purpose to payoff. And just to keep it really simple, if our payoff is having that influence, impact, income, and inspiration, then we need to promote. Promote what we're doing not what we do. Everybody knows 10 or 50 agents. Everybody knows 50 nonprofits. What are we doing in the world? But let's not just promote by ourselves. Let's get partners. Let's have partners working with us to help us promote. But before we can ask people to partner, we need to be positioned because we know 
that people are going to creep on us. They're going to Google us. They're going to look in our feed. Who is this person? Do I want to partner with them? So we teach them about getting partners. You know, you get a mortgage person and a title company and a local attorney and a coffee shop and all these folks, they all can make money making a difference when they're seen as being socially responsible. So some of the ways for these folks to get out and be seen is to do these videos and just say, hey, you know what? My name is Ren Nix. As Idaho's first charitable real estate specialist, I'm interviewing and showcasing and, and really raising up and acknowledging the nonprofits in my area. We're doing 100 days, 100 heroes, and I'm interviewing the heroes in my community. Now, I use that as an exact example because Ren Nix introduced us. She's mm -hmm. in your program. And when right. she and I started working together, this is what we came up with. So every day for, now this is her, not everybody's gonna do a hundred days of video in, in interviews, but because she's working with you, she was inspired to use all the video techniques you taught her. We brought in the strategy of social responsibility. So instead of just, hey, I'm Ren, I'm the best realtor in town, you can hire me or here's my listing. It's, hey, social responsibility is so important. I want to showcase the people in my community who are heroes to me. And so now she's being positioned. She is showing others. She's celebrating others. They're sharing her videos. So from my perspective, it's about having strategy around how can you get the most exposure with this and do it with a bunch of people who can also benefit, not the least of which are our nonprofit friends. Very cool. I've got a question, Nick, if I can chime yeah. in here. Ahead, um, of so I think some people probably struggle with the concept of using this as a platform to potentially get business. And I struggled with this um, with the Alzheimer's thing because it, it is near and dear to me. I didn't do it for exposure. I did it because my mom has Alzheimer's and I want to I want to make change. I want I want to help make that change. But I struggled with the thought of putting out too much content, even though I know that's the idea. I need to get donations. That's the whole purpose. I want to, I want to help. So maybe somebody doesn't have to go through what we're going through. Right. Cause I know they're probably not going to be able to cure my mom or anybody going through it now, but as somebody who puts out a lot of content with the strategic mindset, with the, with the strategy of exposure, right. I, I want you to know, like, and trust me, but when it comes to using uh, the, the, the terminology that you keep using, which is the social responsibility. I'm thinking somebody else is thinking like me, which is I don't want to be slimy and feel like I'm using cancer or using this good cause to essentially sell something. Right. Um, and so when somebody has that objection or has that mindset, you kind of answered a little bit, but I'd like you to, I, I figured I'd just call you straight out. And first of all, if you know, Ren, you completely lost all of my credibility right there, but I'm <laughs> totally kidding. I'm sorry. We love Ren. Um, but seriously, I, so how would you, how would you respond to that? Well, thank you for piping in, Jeff. I, I was kind of feeling awkward not having you join the conversation <laughs> and I appreciate you bringing that up because it is a big elephant in the room and it does come up sometimes, but here's the thing, just like we've been talking about, no one's ever heard of this before. So whether it's the Alzheimer's community, veterans, the local soup kitchen, your church, they need to be in, informed, they need to be educated, the donors need to be educated, the real estate, everybody needs to know about this. So when we're doing a campaign, it isn't about, and, 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 I, and I share this with my agents all the time, we're not cramming this down anybody's throat, that's not what this is about, it's about informing and educating. So for Ren, for example, when she is interviewing a hero in her community, whether it's a nonprofit or a business that's doing great things in the world or the mayor or someone else who's a leader and socially responsible, she's just showing them to everyone. She's letting everyone know about their nonprofit. Now, if she starts the conversation by saying, you know what, as Idaho's only charitable real estate specialist, I feel called to let everyone in this state this beautiful state full of heroes that I love. I want my nonprofits to know they don't have to struggle anymore. They don't have to do fundraisers that are gonna get canceled. They don't have to beg their friends for $20 for a raffle ticket. They can actually let the property owners know 
that they can be a contribution to their nonprofits. As a matter of fact, we're doing a campaign right now, save a nonprofit, rescue a donor. Because the people who donate this real estate do it because they love the cause. They are not persuaded. They are not convinced or sold. They are educated and informed. And when they want to make a donation, who are we to stand in the way of them not being able to give a $500,000 check to that church or that other group? So when we talk about this, this is absolutely about information and education. There's nothing to be sold here as far as you need to do this or you've got to do it. And for those agents that are doing that sort of thing, for example, I've got another agent out in Minnesota, Minnesota Mission Possible, you know, and, and when Lori does her videos, hey guys, as Minnesota's first charitable real estate specialist, I know a lot of fabulous nonprofits in this area and I want to acknowledge them and share them with you. And when she shares them, and everybody knows that she's also a charitable real estate specialist. Ding, ding, ding. How does that work? How can you help us? So we're not focusing on one organization or, you know, using or taking advantage of a group. We are educating and informing. And the ones that are visionary and say, what? Our nonprofit got canceled. We were just having a meeting last night about how we don't know what we're going to do. And now you're telling us that the donors we already have have property that they want to donate, but none of us knew how to do it. And you're going to help us facilitate. Yay. <laughs> Does that help? Sure. Yeah. I, th I think, well, part of the, part of the answer is probably just get over it. Um, because if you, if your heart's in the right place, mm. you don't need to worry about what other people think. Um, but I guess, I guess, Nick, this is kind of like, when we're talking about video strategy, which I know we're tying that together here, right. I guess this is not a whole heck of a lot different. This is a different spin on becoming the digital mayor and doing and and lifting up a community and, and lifting up local businesses during times of, you know, COVID, right? During times of uh, when businesses are struggling. And I guess this is the same concept. It's a different spin, a different idea that most of us don't think about. I know I didn't. I, I haven't. I didn't even know this existed. And I know I missed the beginning. So I'm, I'll probably have to go back and watch the first five minutes. But um, yeah, it's interesting. I, I, I've i never thought of it this way. And I'm, I'm glad you're here and, and sharing. It's good. Well, I'm, I'm curious, Jeff, because so so one kind of follow up on that, Tammy and Jeff would be, you know, so Jeff, I know we often talk about, you know, sort of not introducing yourself or, or saying anything at the beginning. And obviously part of Tammy's approach is to kind of mention that you have this specialty right off the bat. So I'm curious, Jeff, I mean, Having now heard that explanation, do you have any any ideas or suggestions on how to incorporate that in a less sort of direct way? Because I know you're, um, and we're seeing an example of it right now, and you got the branding on the hat and the sign behind you, and you kind of do the subtle branding thing. So do you have any ideas uh, in terms of how uh, we might be able to help people work these things in in, in that way? or? I don't, I don't think I would treat it any differently than what we coach people to do when they're doing community content, when they're creating groups and they're going out and visiting or and interviewing local businesses is, is you make it all about the business, but you have every right to introduce yourself uh, and introduce who you're with, what you do for a living and potentially brand yourself, which is subtle. It's like logoing the video, which is a little slimier to me than you just so happen to be wearing a hat or a t-shirt that spells out what you do. Um, I don't think, obviously I clearly live, live and represent that, um, but I think that's it. And that's what I tell people all the time because I get people that say, number one, I don't wanna say anything. I feel like I shouldn't do that. Or I get the other side, they're like, well, I need to sell something. And I'm like, you know, no to neither one of them. It's like just a little bit in between. And, and it's like, you lead in with an intro. What is, what is it about? Grab their intrigue. Then when you, when you're introducing them, start out with, Hey, I'm Jeff Fitzer and I'm with XYZ real estate company. And I'm here today with boom. And, and then you just go into it and that's it. That's all you have to do. But I think a lot of people think lots well, of wasted time. I'm never going to get a sale. I'm never going to actually get business out of this. But the reality is the more good you do, the more visible you'll be and the more people will remember when you're reminding them what you do for a living and that's it. And then, and then it's a win, 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 you know, right. the, the, the consumer is winning, whoever you're interviewing, the charity's winning, you're winning. It's a longer game, but man, it, uh, if, if we're going to go there and I hate to go there on this topic, but that's really at the end of the day, I mean, that's, that is kind of part, part of what you're doing. 
Well, and this is such an interesting topic. Look how popular and successful and well-known and established and incredible you are. You've never heard of it. I had never heard of it. I've talked to people who've been training at Keller Williams for 40 years, people who sit on the board of the American Cancer Society and own a real estate company, and they've never heard of it. And that's okay. That, but that's why we say what we are. You know, when I've got the real agents of change behind me on the screen, when people hear charitable real estate, I've never heard of that. How do I research it? How do I look it up? Well, I want them to, to know that they can come to us because frankly, we are the only group that's teaching it like this to real estate agents, nonprofits, all the people who support them. We're the only group that are certifying them. We're the only ones that you can come to that are a one-stop shop to help you facilitate real estate agents, full commission. We understand the tax benefits. We know how to talk to the donors. Like the nonprofits are really, I mean, they're very protective of their donors and they should be, that's their lifeblood. And they need to feel really comfortable that when we talk to them about this, look, your donors, they wanna know about this because we are giving them an option. At the end of the day, when we say, you know, save a nonprofit, rescue a donor. One of the stories that we give that is so popular, you know, we've talked about high net worth people. And, and when I'm strategizing with someone, if high net worth people is who you wanna do business with, we'll teach you how to get in front of thousands of them. But one of our favorite stories is a woman who was giving $25 a year for 25 years to, I don't remember exactly the name of it, the American Jewish um, Health Federation, something like that. Well, their fundraiser saw our specialized nonprofit doing a talk like this one day. They reach out, long story short, that fundraiser now has in her mind, huh, when I'm out fundraising, I can just tell people we benefit from real estate. So this woman, $25 a year, you never would have thought anything about it. And she said, hey, by the way, just want to let you know, if you know anybody, we can benefit from real estate. Woman had a piece of real estate, wasn't a big deal. It was a $70,000 little piece of real estate. But when they sold it, it was a $43,000 check to that nonprofit. And mm -hmm. even though that nonprofit had received a million dollars from one person before, this woman became their poster child. She was their hero for months. They touted about her on social media. Look at, you know, so-and-so. She, she gave her property $43,000, you know, unlike the guy who had a hundred million and gave a million, who cares, you know? So it, it really does. It, it's something that, that empowers legacy for anyone. It helps the real estate agents stand out. When I, you know, consult with my agents to say charitable real estate specialist, no one else is saying that. It's unique. It is definitely a unique sales proposition and it makes people's ear perk up and say, what? You do what? And it's a great conversation starter, not to sell people anything, but to inform them that it's a possibility. Educate. Educate. I, if, if I'm if I'm a realtor listening to this, and there's there's not you know the the whole real real estate world's not on this call, uh, so the few that are, this is an opportunity for you to learn about this program, maybe even more in depth than what you're learning today, and take that as content out to your audience and mm -hmm. educate them about what the possibilities are. You might pick up a listing as a result of it, right? You might pick up somebody who wants to donate, which then equates to a commission. Why? Because you educated them. Uh, so there's opportunity in that as well. You're doing, and again, you're doing, you're doing good in the process. I would love yeah. and be honored for you and Nick. I think I've already invited you, Nick, but we're doing our certification class the third Tuesday of every month. And I'd love for you guys to sit in as my guest and just learn a little bit more about it. It's a, it's a long class, but it is jam packed. I, I see some people in the chat that have been in our class talking about how great it is. And uh, yeah, it's, it's life changing for the right people. And if it's not for you, that's okay. Cause there's a lot of people that it is good for. And when the average donation is $550,000 from one piece of property, you can see why it's so easy to start giving millions of dollars to properties now your organization has an extra million dollars. What would they do with that? Mm -hmm. See, those are the questions we ask. What would your nonprofit do with $550,000? Let them start thinking about that. Well, we would, we would build a new church. We would, we would save a thousand veterans a month. Like, tell us what you do with it. 
and then we'll tell you how to do it. Yeah, I think that, you know, for those of you that might kind of have those qualms around the idea of, you know, using nonprofits and charitable giving for your own personal benefit. I mean, I will say, like, if I, you know, I've seen some of the stuff that like Ren's doing um, and some of the other agents that the Cami's work with. And if everyone was saying those things, I think it would feel kind of kind of smarmy a little bit, you know, but we're so early in this that it it never does because it's all information. It's all education. Right. Um, so I think that's also important to understand is that, you know, and this is universal truth with when it comes to marketing is when you're one of the first people to do something, you win. And in fact, like they're, they're even if you go a little bit deeper into positioning and things like that, um, if you're the first one to say it, it doesn't even matter if someone else has more of a claim to it because people remember you, right? So the first person ever said, I'm the best real estate agent in the whole area, which all of them say now. But the first person that said it didn't matter if they were a lot smaller in terms of their business than somebody else. They were the one that remembered that way. So, you know, when you're the first agent to come in and say, hey, I'm doing this thing and I'm supporting these nonprofits and, and that's your mission, you will be remembered as the first. You'll be remembered as the pioneer. Um, you will never come across as, as overtly promotional. But the 50th person that comes in and says that they're going to look like a copycat. Right. And so that's that's true for what Cammy's talking about. It's true of video. You know, Jeff's gotten a lot of crap over the years about some of the things he was first to do with video. And now look how many people are imitating and copying that and how much of a following he's grown um, as a result of that. So, I mean, Cammy, when, when somebody's getting started with this and they, they sort of have some of these problems and fears, give, give me some examples of the kinds of videos somebody could be making when they first get started that might make it a little bit easier to get the ball rolling. You know, when we were talking about doing this around video, I thought about just some of the simple stuff that people don't think about with video, including right. like when you send a private message to Facebook, private message, most people will type a message and they're trying to set an appointment or they're trying to get somebody. If you leave a voicemail, voicemail is always better than typing, but nothing beats this. If you hold that button down and just send a 20 second video, you know, so for example, Jeff, I'm just going to use you or leverage you or, or help to promote you. You know, if I were to send a message and I knew you and I knew that Alzheimer's was something that spoke to your heart, I could hold that button down and in 20 seconds, I could say, Jeff, I was just in a class and I heard about nonprofits just like Alzheimer's that is getting checks, 152,000, 300,000, 43,000. We need to talk. Enthusiasm passion, urgency, love, appreciation, real like, like we need to talk, man. I know how much you love that organization. Let's do something for them. And holding that button down and doing that video. And of course, like you teach, you got to have a nice background and, you know, don't have beer bottles sitting on the counter and dog barking in the background, but do a nice video that captures your emotion and, and urgency. That's what's going to get people on the phone for you. Yeah, I love that. I think that I think video messaging is, is very much overlooked by a lot of people. It's actually the first thing that we teach our students how to do, because in a lot of ways, you know, we emphasize the idea that video is a form of communication. It's not just a marketing tool. And so you should start with the simplest versions of that as possible. And that's usually going to be one to one video messaging. And that I mean, Cammy, I will say, like, of all the people I, I message with on Facebook, you definitely send videos the most of, of any of them so far. Um, and actually, I it's kind of struck me as like, why am I not doing this? I need to be sending videos every single time I message with somebody. In fact, uh, it was kind of funny, Jeff, we had, uh, she sent me a video and I replied to the video, but there was a third person in the chat and they were like, I don't have my makeup on. I, I can't do a video, <laughs> you know, like apologizing for not communicating that way. That's so funny. yeah, it resonates, right? I mean, this is stuff that, that people remember. And I, I, this is one aspect of what we really teach that I want people to understand is again, when you're the first person to send someone a video message on these topics, it never comes across as spammy, right? It's, it's innovative, it's different, it's unique, and it stands out to them. And it almost doesn't matter what you're saying. And I mean, I, I did this uh, two, about two years ago, I started sending uh, bomb bomb cold video messages to brokers in the St. Louis area, basically trying to get an opportunity to come speak in their office. And I got a lot of them because I was the first person to ever send them a video message. Now, doesn't work as well anymore, right? Because other people started using tools like Bomb Bomb and started sending those videos. Um, and so being first to do something gives you a lot of protection, right? You get a lot of wiggle room. Um, you also get kind of the opportunity to experiment and learn as you go. 
Uh, whereas everybody else that comes in and copies this later then has to has to kind of do that at a much higher speed, right? So I love that. I love this idea of you know one to one video messaging being a big part of this process. Um, I, let me pause for just a second. There was a question I wanted to make sure we get to, and then I want to make sure you have an opportunity to kind of tell people how to get involved. And that question, uh, which was a few minutes ago, I apologize. Let me pull it back up here. It was from Bill, and he said uh, back to talking about the the sort of charitable. Uh, breakdown, right? So let's say there's a million dollar property. Um, the the nonprofit's going to keep their 10%. So there's $900,000 left that goes to another charity. Um, how much then can the donator deduct? If you can give us an answer on that. Well, you know, there's a lot to be said for basis. How much did they pay for the property? Like there's so many um, variables, but in a nutshell, if the appraisal is a million, right? Then that's the basis for their tax deduction is the million. Now, now, is wow. there a mortgage that needs to be paid off? Does the donor want to get that 300 cash back? Cause then, you know, they got to pay taxes on the money they pull out. Cause it's just like any other type of a sale, but, um, but yeah, they, they write. And so what if the property appraises at a million and it's been on the market for two years and it just hasn't sold cause it needs a roof. And the listing agent says, look, if you put it at 900 and put a roof on it, you could sell it. So now our nonprofit comes along. We have this conversation with the guy. He sees the benefits of what we're doing. Well, now we put a $50,000 roof on it. We list it at 900,000 because that's what's really gonna sell it. The property donor is still getting a million dollars as the basis for his tax deduction. So. I don't want to get too bogged down in all the boring details around all of that. I really want to just give the inspiration of all of this because the, the class that we teach gets into all those nuances. And the good news is our specialized nonprofit does all that boring part. They can explain all that to the donor. What, what the agents need to know is you can be the hero in your community and get paid a full commission. And the people that you're working with do it for Fidelity Charitables. So it's as up above board as it can possibly be. Fidelity Charitables isn't going to work with anybody who's doing anything weird, and we aren't. Love it. All right. Well, we got a few minutes left here, uh, Cami. I want to remind everybody, if you have any questions, now's the chance to ask them. We are getting low on time at this point. Um, but my, my next question for you is, you know, somebody's watching, and we actually had, I know at least one person in the chat kind of asked this already, um, how do they get involved? What's the next step? You know, should they, how do they contact you or get signed up or what, what do they do? And, and also, I haven't been able to look over there and read them because I, I can't do both. Um, I don't know if I'll get a list of all the questions, but I'm happy to respond to each and every question. And you can certainly reach out to me, Cami at CamiBaker.com. My cell phone number is 603 785 2598. And on Facebook, we have the real agents of change. Now, there's a lot of agents of change. We are the real agents of change, Facebook page and group. You want to go to the group, join the group. It's free. I actually have an ebook that's all about charitable real estate. I have a wonderful uh, social media person, Danielle Cummings, who has created an ebook that will really help you understand how this works. Uh, our link isn't working, but if you reach out to me, I'll make sure that you get a copy of it. And I wanted to say one more thing about the private message video. When you think about being a listing agent, you know how competitive it is. And there's going to be more than one agent up for the job a lot of the times. When you are the one out of the three who even sends that potential seller a video, you will stand out. I can't tell you how many deals I've gotten because I was the one that sent the handwritten card and sent the video. And there's something else we talk about called research, reach out, relationship build. Research who you're getting ready to talk to, reach out and relationship build before you even get together. That's why I knew that Jeff has a soft spot, soft spot in his heart for Alzheimer's because I took about three minutes before we came on because it doesn't take long. Learn who you're talking to and help them know that you care enough about them that you look them up. Not because you're creepy and creeping and stalking and weird, but because you care about them. Let's be honest. It. Let's be honest. That's what we all do nowadays anyway. So there's no reason to be weirded out by it. Cause yeah. if I hear a name first now, first thing I do is go to Instagram, Facebook, Google, I go search them, right? That's just what we do. 
And uh, so it's, it's important that, that you gave me the point to say, it's important for you to have an online presence for that reason alone. Yeah. So, cause Cammy probably got a whole handful of stuff that now she knows about me that she never <laughs> realized she was looking for. So yeah. <laughs> Good or, right. well, we, Good or bad. We are getting here towards the end. I do want to share one last thing from the uh, business video school side of things here. Um, and I know Jake has posted this in the chat for us a couple of times today, but I wanted to show you how to do it in case you had any questions. Uh, one of the best ways to, to start learning from us in business video school is to get onto our email list and start receiving our free video lessons. Uh, we'll send you one a day for about the first two weeks. And then usually we have a new one every week quite a few of them. So these are all of the little tips and tricks on how to look better in your videos, how to decide the right topics to talk about, um, how to improve your confidence and, and just how you, you look and sound when you're making videos, all kinds of great stuff. It's really easy to sign up. You just need to text the phrase, learn video without any spaces, right? So L-E-A-R-N-V-I-D-E-O, that's the body of the text and it needs to go to 44222 as the phone number. You can see on the screen here on the left-hand side, um, that's an actual example of how to do it. So the phone number just goes in 44222 and then send learn video to us. It'll respond. It'll ask you for your email. And once you send that to us, you'll start getting our free video lesson. So if you are looking to improve your video skills, if you're looking to make video a regular part of your business, this is the best place to start. Um, we currently, we, we are accepting students right now, but we haven't, a lot, we haven't announced the next date for our next class yet. So this is the way to find out when the next class opens is if you're on this list, you will receive a notification for that, right? Just wanted to share that real quick. So um, we are getting towards the end here, uh, Cami. So was there any, any last thoughts or anything else you wanted to make sure that we shared with everybody before we wrap up? Well, I do want to let everyone know that you are partnering with me on my 30 day challenge that's coming up in our group. We want to help our agents to position themselves properly. So since we know people are gonna Google and creep on us, uh, if we're going to be the charitable real estate specialist in our state, people are going to be interested. They're going to look you up and you better look good when they do. So Rick, uh, Nick is going to be doing that with us. I don't remember the dates, but um, if you get involved with our group pretty shortly here, uh, you'll be able to get into our, our private group. As a matter of fact, you're going to be doing it in our Real Agents of Change public group. So if you guys go join that group too, you'll get even more of Nick and we're honored to have him in the group. And and, uh, and Jeff, I would love to interview you for the Real Agents of Change interview series. I think Nick and I already did one. So we'll talk about that offline. Sounds good. Very cool. All right. Well, looking forward to all of that. Yeah. And we're definitely going to be providing, uh, I think we're doing three days in a row of trainings on video. So make sure that you're in Cammie's group. Make sure you get on our email list. And obviously, in both of those cases, you'll probably hear plenty about it. Um, as we're getting closer and then we'll take it from there. So um, we are at 10 till, which is typically our cutoff time, Cami. So that is all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And uh, like I said, I'd love to answer any of the questions in the chat if I get that, uh, that recording of that. And uh, guys, if you send me a private message and you tell me who is the nonprofit of your choice and what would they do with that $550,000, I'll send you a free gift as well. Wow, that's awesome. Cool. Well, I'm going to see if I can't copy out the chat for you, Cami, before we jump off of here. But I do think we answered any of the uh, direct questions, although I, I, there was a couple email addresses and whatnot that got, got stuck in here. I will copy it and I'll make sure to get it over. I just saved you. it. Don't worry about you it. You did. Okay. Well, you're good then. All right. Cool. Well, I think that's all we got, Jeff. I don't know. Any final thoughts as we wrap up? Good. This, is, uh, this has been good. It's been insightful. Thank you. All right. Good stuff. Well, thanks for joining us, Cammie, and we will see all of you. Um, just so you know, we're, we're doing these uh, these interviews. I think we're going to be doing a few more of them in the coming weeks and months. So definitely keep an eye out for our upcoming webinars here in LabCode Agents. And thanks for tuning in today. We appreciate you being here. Thank you.